thank you so much for joining us today. Um, the session um, will be recorded, uh, so please hit continue as you see that button pop up on your screen. Um, in the next, uh, we ask everybody to please take a moment and follow the instructions that will um, be up on the screen in just a moment uh, to participate in our Mentimeter poll. Um, answers to the question will appear anonymous, anonymously as they are submitted. Um, and additionally, if you have questions at any time throughout the hour, um, please post those in Q&A, and we will answer as many as possible as time allows. Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us for the special session with artist Mark Fai to discuss his 46 Please painting and accompanying docuseries depicting George Floyd's last words. During this time, we will also hear from our Dean, Don Pope Davis, as he engages Mark in a Q&A. Thank you to the team in EDGE, uh, Dr. Carlotta Penn, Ryan Randall, Jenna Azate, Austin McClellan, and Neil McKinney for making today possible. Little did we know when the Dean began talking with Mark almost a year ago, that his visit with us would occur during the Chauvin trial and a day after the subsequent guilty verdict. This webinar is even more poignant for many of us after the events of yesterday, including yet another police killing of Makia Bryant right here in Columbus. In keeping with the Dean's appreciation and support of the arts and our college commitment to racial justice and equity, Mark Fye is in talks with EHE to provide his painting and docuseries a permanent home here in EHE. Mark's desire is to offer art and imagery as a reflective tool for discussion and action related to racial justice. We look forward to inviting Mark back to EHE during the next academic year once those discussions are finalized. Before we move forward, we want to caution that there is sensitive material during the webinar. Mark Fye utilizes actual audio um, of George Floyd. So um, thank you for all of you if you were able to participate in our Mentimeter question. And one of the questions we asked was, what is the role of art in racial justice activism? And so let us pause for a few minutes and have you um, answer that question. Well, thank you for having me. Um, it's been uh, it's been an interesting journey from the conversations we first started with uh, Dr. Pope Davis and yourself, uh, Dr. Arnold. Um, really appreciate the opportunity to have my work, uh, you know, presented here, and for everyone on the team that has helped to put this together. <clears throat> so. I think that art has a role in just moving people. I think it has a role in changing our perspective. I think it gives voice to the voiceless. I think it also allows us to, as an artist, to say things that people are feeling and may not necessarily know how to express it. And, um, you know, for this piece uh, around the George Floyd that came out of uh, inside of me, <laughs> my core. Um, and so uh, being able to, uh, to have something like that presented and created and received and to be able to put it out to the world um, and to share that um, perspective and to see how it's received um, and hopefully change people's hearts and minds, which is the, the end goal of the work that I do. Um, I think that art plays a big role in that. Art is media. It's not just paintings. It's it's uh, the movies we watch. <laughs> it's um, the plays we go to. It's the music we listen to, and all those things connect and bring us all together. So, it has a very powerful effect on us and a unifying effect. And I think art has its place clearly in um, the fight for racial justice. So, thank thanks. you so much um, for offering that. And as you can see um, from the screen to our participants and to um, Mark is that many of our participants resonated <laughs> uh, with what you actually said. Some of their responses are coming up as well 
about um, what they feel is the importance of um, racial justice activism and the role that art actually plays in that. Um, and one thing uh, that uh, you did not mention, um, but is uh, very powerful as we see from the screen is that art is uh, power expression and can reach people without speaking. And I think I would like to just tell the audience that that's one of the things um, that Mark has brought up even in conversations that we've had with him about uh, the usage of imagery um, as a form of expression uh, and the role that it can play in reflection, but also the role that it can play in actually um, eliciting um, um, action uh, on that part. So thank you so much. Um, for um, just that initial conversation uh, around this. No problem, thank you. <laughs> so um, let me turn right now and introduce um, our artist today. Uh, Mark Fai is an international and as he self-describes, artivist and creator. And um, he really believes that um, an ideology rooted in the belief that we all have the ability to create and make an impact on our world. Uh, Mark demonstrates this through art philanthropy and art wealth generation. First, through his impact model, he creates art to help organizations across the globe spread awareness about their cause and access financial resources. He holds these organizations accountable by ensuring funds generated from the sale of his art are used to make an impact on the lives of those in need. Secondly, he uses art as an asset class for wealth generation and store of value for art connoisseurs, enthusiasts, collectors, and investors, consciously preserving the value of art. And he is very deliberate about appreciating its value over time. Mark established Mark Fi Creations as a social business enterprise that spreads the Mark Fi ideology and executes the impact model internationally, demonstrating to others that we can make an impact on the lives of others while benefiting. Through creation, we make an impact. So doing this next portion of our time, we are going to play a few clips in which Mark talks about the impact the George Floyd murder had on him, racism in America, his own background, and he'll also share a perspective about Black people's place in the world. These were all inspirations in the creation of his 46 Pleas painting, depicting George Floyd's last words pleading for his life. Our Dean, Don Pope Davis, will also lead a question and answer during the time between the clips. And also, if you have questions, please use the Q&A function at the bottom of your screen. And if there is time, the Dean will actually um, pose a few of your questions um, for the artist. Today is um, June 20th. Really what's prompted this recording, uh, which is one of the first times I'm actually doing something like this, is uh, the incident with George Floyd. And watching that video really had a big impact on me. And of course, we all know about the uh, riots and protests and all the different words that have been used to describe how people are responding to what took place and how that has basically taken on a life of its own all over the world. I took some time to really think about what's been going on and wanted to get my thoughts out there and just share them with the world. I thought a, a good way of doing that is to do that through art. I paint, so I decided to do a piece that really sends a
So Mark, thank you for that introduction and welcome to our community uh, and, and giving us a perspective to get this conversation going. Thank can you. you can, you're welcome. Uh, can you tell us more about your background, uh, who you are and what experiences have led you to become an artist, an activist uh, around this, this topic? Um, well, so I'm Jamaican by birth. <laughs> um, and uh, with a rich Sierra Leone heritage. My great-great-grandfather is a national hero in Sierra Leone. And uh, I've lived uh, here in Sierra Leone and the United States. Um, and so growing up, traveling and living in different parts of the world and seeing how the Black community is impacted and how we live has given me a perspective about um, being here in America and what that's, that's like. Uh, and so the journey to this moment, um, I don't think I really even understood um, how deep and how strongly I felt about things until last year. I think being home um, with the pandemic, um, being able to sit my thoughts with it for a long time. And then the George Floyd murder <clears throat> was, uh, was quite significant. But prior to that, even for art, was uh, an accident. I, my background is, you know, I'm an information management consultant by profession, um, have done international trade and minerals. I've done a number of other things in my background. And so I didn't really realize I was, had the talent or ability to paint until very late. So um, that talent, when I discovered it, my mom said to me that I should use it as a gift as a gift and I should use it to help people and to make a difference. And so since then I've been using my art to try to figure out how to help people. And so the George Floyd incident last year uh, was triggering, I think triggering for all of us. And so um, out of that, I decided to create, you know, the painting. And uh, I felt like that wasn't enough. And that led into me wanting to do something more. So um, I think my background and the, the my life experiences living in Jamaica, living here, living in Sierra Leone and London and Shanghai and all those different places, giving, giving me that world perspective. But just seeing how Blacks are in the world has birthed inside of me a desire to find a way to help to empower the Black community towards independence. So when you think about this in terms of living in these different communities, you clearly have been influenced by the experiences in different cultural communities, uh, uh, living in different places. How has that changed your thinking in relationship to your art? Um, <laughs> uh, so I try to put images out that are either uplifting, powerful in terms of the people. I do a lot of portraits. And this, this piece that I did for George Floyd is actually very different from the rest of the work that I normally do. And so um, most of the images I try to put out, however, are images of faces that have impacted the world or moved towards change. You know, if it's Martin Luther King, and it's everything not just from an activism perspective, but um, at more from a humanistic perspective and how we are able to make an impact in different areas of our lives or different parts of society uh, through art. And so I try to put images out that project that and place those thoughts in the hearts and minds of people. So, so the images, so, so you're, you're doing your art to stimulate conversations. Um, you're, you're, and you're also looking for a reaction for people. Would that be a correct assessment? And um, I want my art to create impact <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, at, its, at its core. I, I think conversation is a starting point, but at the end, that the conversation I think is more internal. I want to inspire people from the inside for them to be able to change how they feel about things, to change how they look at things. Um, I think if you change a person's heart and mind, then you are able to change their behavior. And if you can change their behavior, then you can change your society. And so my hope is that the images that I put out and the conversations that I start and the things that I spark within people, it's going to allow them and move them towards positive change. 
So who inspires you? Um, <laughs> uh, you know, I mean, w w give us a little, give us a little context here of who, who inspires you to do the work that, that inspired you to start creating in this way um, and, and given your own history here. So when I first started, I, um, I really was just playing around. And so I'm a huge Bob Marley fan. Um, I talk about it in one of my docu-series episodes. And, um, you know, I'm inspired by him a lot because one, he's Jamaican. <laughs> the other part is that his music has moved and inspired and motivated so many people all over the world. Um, you know, Bob Marley was also a, um, a student of Garvey, uh, Marcus Garvey. And um, he is definitely one of the people that inspire me because of the message that he came with about, um, you know, helping Blacks at that time to understand that they were more than slaves. They were more than just the stories that they were given to and passed on to them. And so um, that is one of the images and the people that still to this day really inspires me. But, you know, from a musical perspective and just the message that's within Bob Marley's music, I'd say he's one of my biggest inspirations. And, you know, happy to say that I have a collection of paintings um, in the Bob Marley Museum. <laughs> so, that's the next. So, so say a little bit more about how do you decide the medium that you use to create? What's that process like for you? Uh, I, I, most of it comes from inspiration, right? So the medium I use, generally speaking, is just acrylic and uh, on canvas. Um, and uh, I, the way I go about the process, usually it's something that I'm inspired to do. It's usually an image that I want to put out there because I think it's important. Um, and, you know, specifically, for example, in the case of George Floyd, which was very different, it was me thinking, how do I convey the message that I want people to receive? Mm -hmm. And so I would say that prior to last year, um, I was using my art really in trying to connect with the organizations that I worked with and making sure that I aligned with their message and aligned an image of an individual or hero who would connect with their audience so that the funds could go towards making an impact. And transition that's happened, I think, as a result of last year and seeing the impact that comes out of creating something that is focused squarely on, um, you know, what I believe and what I think um, is definitely shifting the way that I'm going forward with my art and really focusing on creating bodies of work that are going to go out into society to make a really lasting and meaningful change. Um, very similar to how this particular piece um, is at this moment, extremely relevant. Um, you know, even though at the time when I created it was relevant, but as time goes on to understand that it will live on um, and people will be able to use it as a reference to understand what happened at this point is extremely powerful. So the medium that I use um, is, you know, a canvas and that's, it, even that is shifting as now I'm coming in to do more film and uh, work in other projects to use other mediums to project and create um, just so that that change and impact can be felt. Thank you for that, Mark. Um, and we will transition and um, thank you audience. Uh, we'll transition to a few more of um, clips that the artist has actually provided for us. And so um, stay tuned. Mm -hmm. this thing happened with George Floyd, I felt like I needed to say something. You know, we have all these opinions all the time and um, sometimes we share them and sometimes we feel like we can't do anything. And I went through this phase of just feeling really hopeless. Like, what can I do? And if I do anything, is there gonna be any difference that it will really make? And that hopelessness went to, you know, feeling like a coward because then I started thinking about the options that I had and the things that I could do to make a difference and think that, okay, you know, some of these things are actually gonna have implications on me and my life. I have a daughter that relies on me. I have loved ones. What's gonna to happen to them if I decide to stand up 
in the way that I think it's really needed for us to get the kind of change that we, we need to have. But I do believe that those people, Martin Luther King, who stood up for this kind of stuff, he's dead. They killed him. And many others. When I think about what needs to be done for that change, it makes me feel afraid. Because I feel like, man, if I start saying something or trying to be a force that's going to make a difference, how is that going to impact my life? <laughs> Right? Um. So, Mark, um, as a follow up to that piece, um, something that you said resonated with me, and, and, and part of it was that. The, the people, the art you've created, uh, the people that you have, have visualized for your art, they've all had an impact in our society in some way, shape or form. And conversely, they have paid a price for that. Uh, and, and so when you talk about these issues of social justice and change, how do you think of your art uh, as uh, fitting into that space, uh, given the commitment you've articulated so far? Um, <laughs> I think it's, it's, it's specific to the, the, what you're talking about. I, I don't think it's just across the board for art. I think when you start, when, whenever we start to have conversations about things that are shifting societal and quote unquote norms that, may, that are norms that need to be changed, Right. For example, you know, our criminal justice system in America or just the place of blacks in our world and society and the discrimination that happens. Um, those things, um, when you put yourself out there and you're trying to create that change and move it into a space that it's propelled onto the world stage and people now can identify you and put you in that box, if you will, or put you in that space. I think it exposes you in a certain kind of way. And, um, for me, it's having been a behind the scenes person as Mark Fai, I literally was anonymous <laughs> until last year. No one knew that I was an artist. And so coming out and doing this for the first time was, was new, was, I, was, I was scared, but I, you know, I was compelled. I felt like I had to do something. Um, but I think that uh, in this space, putting the art out and using whatever medium, and good, as I said, it's not just you know, painting, but it's um, it's other mediums of dance or music or, or, or film. Um, you put yourself, um, create a target for yourself um, when you're talking about things that uh, go against, you know, the norms of what the people in control may not necessarily want to change. As a psychologist, I often think about the, the notion of vulnerability when you put yourself out there when you create something, you create a product because people will have an opinion. Yes. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you, 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 you know, people will have an opinion whether you like it or not. And so, right. and so you have to, you, you have to begin to think through uh, what do you hope will happen uh, as a result of this artwork? What were you, because you, you begin with a certain concept of, a certain experience as you, you've you talked about being grounded in social justice, but someone else may see something entirely different. Uh, and so how do you how do you balance that expectation that you have in, in as a creator and the experience that someone may have as a result of what they see you doing, which could be completely different than your own perspective. And then that's a great thing about, you know, the human experience. I, I'm, I, it's interesting, like when you create and you put something out there and someone sees it and they see something that you weren't thinking about, <laughs> that wasn't in your thought process. Um, um, I receive it. I think, you know, it's inspiration. I think that's where inspiration comes from. And so if someone can find something else in something that you create that may not necessarily even be the message that you're putting out there, um, to be able to impact someone in that way is meaningful. Um, and hopefully it's positive. You know, there is a certain energy of positivity and unity that I put behind my work, um, even within this piece, which is very conflicted. 
right? There's, and I talk about in the painting, there are two sides of it, right? There's a very, um, there's just one side where I'm thinking about things from uh, how do we get unified? How do we end this? How do we change people's hearts and minds? And then there's this activism piece of man, we have to do something to go get our power back. Um, that almost uh, seems in conflict. But uh, I think people receive the message, you know, um, in different ways, and I'm open to that. I want them to to interpret it the way that they they receive it, and hopefully impacts them in a way that's going to move towards positivity or to take action that's going to lead to positive change. So, so say a little bit about who you are hoping to influence by your art. What is that? What do you, what are you thinking in terms of that? You 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 talked about people having different interpretations, but who, who do you have in mind uh, as, you, as you create this? Or, or are you doing some of this because this is what you feel called to do? Um, some of it is called, I think, I think it's more of the, of the latter a little bit now than the, and as I said, there's this transition that's happening. Um, this is a, a change in uh, the George Floyd um, um, murder, the timing of it, the, um, the pandemic at home, um, gave me a lot of time to start thinking about how that direction, the direction that I, I'm gonna go in. Um, the overall, uh, the overarching message for my art is to change the hearts and minds of everyone. I want to impact people. Um, in terms of where I am focused in my energy, it is right now around the black community because I don't think we have to look outside of ourselves to get change that we really want to see. I think we have to look internally and be the ones that want to make the change, right? We have to be the ones to internalize where we are and take responsibility. And um, in doing so, um, create our own community and empower ourselves, realizing our power, understanding where we came from, understand the power that's inside of us. And with doing so, we'll be able to move towards a better place. And so my energy at this point is focused on trying to communicate with and connect with that community in that way, but also speak to the broader community and understand how, you know, we can't always talk to ourselves if we want to create change. We have to talk outside of, you know, our community because um, if we want to create a, a change of people's hearts and minds, you have to be talking to everyone. So. Um, some of the art that I'm creating is speaking very specific to certain, you know, groups, but the overarching message is about how do we shift our, our hearts and minds towards, um, you know, love and unity. Let me um, ask one more question before we, we, we move on that triggered in your, your, your response. You, you have kept throughout our conversation coming back to to the killing of George Floyd uh, as a catalyst for you to pivot in this direction uh, and wanting to have an impact. Um, there were other killings before George Floyd. What made that different for you as an artist that George Floyd's death was the catalyst as opposed to those that happened before? Yeah. Uh, and, and since then, if you will, as well. <laughs> right. Um, uh, I think the work I did before was, as I shared, really working with the organizations and trying to get them to enable them or empower them through, you know, the resources that they get from my art. The George Floyd um, video, I think, really... Um, brought out of me the feelings that I had that I didn't express before, the thoughts I was having when those other, you know, when the other murders happened, where I thought about them and I had my feelings and I, I shared them with my friends and I speak to people about it. But when I watched that video and everything that was happening at that moment in the world, the protests that were taking place, and I felt like I was sitting on my hands. I literally felt like I was sitting back and not doing anything. And it compelled me and wanted to make me move. You know, one of the things I talk about is, you know, that was a moment. It was a big shift happening, not just here in America, but it was all over the world. And 
Um, and it was happening all around. You couldn't turn away from it. Like in the pandemic just even um, accentuated that significantly more so because people were locked in their homes and were forced to see it. So that moment for me is what pushed me. And then thinking into the future, you know, I'm always thinking about legacy. And what do I leave behind? I want to be able to make an impact. I want to be able to create something that's going to leave something that when I'm gone, the same people I'm painting will be able to, you know, someone in the future will say, that guy did something. And my daughter is the person I think about when I think about that. Um, and, <laughs> you know, it, I, she's going to hear about this moment, this collective moment. And she's going to look at me at one point in the future and ask me, what happened when you were, you were alive that time you know what was it like just like you know you had a parent that was arrived like during the civil rights movement you asked them what did you do right i want to be able to say that i did something and i'm doing something that's coming truly from deep inside me and so that's shifted something inside of me significantly and i think then doing it also shifted something more inside of me because i think when you have an inspiration or feeling to do something but then you actually take action and then you put yourself into it and then you're pouring yourself into it it is and then you're putting yourself out there it pushes you further and so i think the activism of it um not just creating the art but taking the action to create it and to push it out there also has pushed me in a different direction um, from how i was operating before thank you thank you so much mark um I, again audience thank you so much um, for being a part of this today. And we're gonna pause right here for a moment and share a piece of Mark's artwork. And we're just gonna take a few minutes in silence for you to contemplate um, the piece of art that he created. And then we'll come back and we'll have another clip of the docu-series and uh, be able to answer some of the questions that you've placed in the Q&A. And so we hope all of you, while we did not um, take the full time uh, to examine Mark's painting um, related to the full time, that it actually um, took George Floyd to say those words. Um, it's this kind of interaction and being able to pause and reflect uh, about what we're hearing and what we're seeing uh, that I think Mark Fi actually wants uh, to do with his work. Right now we'll transition and look at um, our last clip um, from the docu-series and then uh, have the Dean actually pose a few of your questions uh, that you've placed in the Q&A.
change that we want to see. We have a war, not just over our physical space, the war that we have to go out there and fight to get that revolution and to change the hearts and minds of people. And the media has a huge role that they play in what happens. And a really good example of that was when coronavirus came out. And for the first time probably in humanity, the entire world came together under one idea to stop something that put them at risk. No matter where you go in the world, they understand wearing a mask and what coronavirus is. And that's because the media was able to communicate that message to everyone all at once. And if they can take that message to protect people and to communicate it so everyone all over the world acts in a singular way, I believe that the media, that same media, has the power to change the hearts and minds of people. They tell you what to be afraid of. And we are all focused on what we're being told to focus on. But I think we have to open our minds, free our minds, start thinking for ourselves, go create our own, use the media as a tool to be able to do that. I believe the media is probably one of the most, if not the most influential tool of what we call the system that needs to play their role in changing the heart and mind. That's that. So, Mark, let me uh, ask you a couple of questions that has come up from the participants. Uh, uh, one question is, what is your advice to an artist or to a new artist in particular wanting to become more of an activist? Uh, what advice would you give to someone who's interested in doing that? Start. <laughs> start. Start. Go create something. Uh, uh, keep creating. Um, and uh, I think a big part of um, a big part of it is being confident in what you're doing and being sure of yourself and putting yourself out there. Um, I'm realizing how important it is to put yourself out there. Um, and so I think it's create and put yourself out there and seek advice. Uh, find someone who you can speak with and who can share with you. Um, but stay true to yourself. I think one of the things I've realized also with my art is that the pieces that really came from within are the pieces that people connect with the most and that create the most impact ultimately. So um, that would be, you know, just create, start, um, put yourself out there, get some advice and be confident about who you are. How did, how did you go about getting that advice? Uh, <laughs> um, so when I started, I didn't have any like, idea. I didn't even think of myself as an artist when I first started, to be honest. And I wasn't trying to put myself out there. I was actually trying to hide behind Mark <laughs> <laughs> Um But I, I, what I think as time has gone on is I've realized, for example, the reason I'm here today is because of a friend um, that introduced me to you, um, you know, Horace Ford. Um, and so um, the creation of the docuseries, I didn't do it on my own. I have people that came together to help me. You know, my friend uh, Andre K took a photograph that I've been using all the time. And George Tandy Jr., the artist that created the music behind it. And so I think getting people involved in behind what you're doing is very important to be able to propel your stuff out there. And so for me, um, it was really, uh, believing in what I was doing and sticking with it. It also sounds like you took a risk. You, you have to be prepared to take a risk in doing this. Would, would you agree with that? Yes. Um, I, th just, I think you were said it earlier. <laughs> yeah. You talked about putting yourself out there, right? Um, the, the risk is, you know, people are gonna have an opinion about what you're saying, your opinion um, or your work. And I think, that's where your confidence comes in and sticking with it and keep creating. If you believe in what you're doing, love what you're doing, you're doing it from a place of passion and you believe in what you're doing, you do it and people will latch on. So um, 
but it is a risk and yeah. I think it pays off. Uh, and, here's another question. Um, you reference your medium has been canvas and acrylic and painting uh, the actual heroes. Um, as you think of this presentation, you know, what was your intent of, of um, the art pieces, both just in words and music, as well as depictions uh, along in the video? Could you speak to that at all? Um, for, the, for the piece, um, I wanted when you read those words, to go back to that moment when you probably saw the video for yourself. Okay, I don't think, you know, you hear the video and it's one thing, but you don't hear it in this very condensed way. I think the, this piece gives you a chance to consume everything that happened in a very short period of time. And um, I think the way that this medium allows you to receive it, even the way that the letters are missing at the end is when someone is not able to breathe they are speaking and they can't say all the letters, they can't pronounce all of them. And so I think that that's one way that I wanted to connect with people um, with the piece um, and for them to get that emotion again and for that to live on and for it to be there as an artifact of this happened, right? This is a moment in time and we're documenting it. A big part of um, who I am now is as our community, Black community, is making sure that we capture our content and we tell our stories. <laughs> and we tell it from our perspective and we talk about it, we express it in the ways that um, we see it and not allow someone else to always tell our stories, and, you know, own it. Um, I think that's important. So that medium um, of the painting was one way of doing that. And then the docuseries was really came out of me wanting to do more and felt like, okay, I have a lot to say about this thing that happened that inspired it. Let me put some words to it and put my face out there and let people see it. And so um, I also hope that it will enable other people and give others the permission to do something. One of the things that I felt when I was, you know, before everything, that I felt helpless and hopeless. I'm like, what the heck could I do that's going to make any material change, right? What is it that I could possibly do, right? I don't have anything. I don't have any, you know, major, you know, resources to go throw at this or any power to go change the system, right? I'm not in the political process. I'm not, you know, there's a senator or a congressman. What can I do, right? And so it made me think about that and figure out, okay, I can start with what I have and everyone else can start with what they have. And if we all do our little part and we all use what we have, it might be your voice. In this case, this is just my voice. Most of this was just me taking a camera, sticking it in front of me, recording it, <laughs> taking some time to edit it and put it out to the world. And you know, here we are. Um, and I wanted it to go as far as possible, right? And to, for it to also be, and I've used this word continually, institutionalized. And so having it be a part of Ohio State University is huge because I feel like this continues. People pass away and they go on but institutions live on forever, right? They live on for a lot longer. And so I feel like this is a way to carry on that work and the message behind it, which is change in the hearts and minds of people ultimately towards you know, love and unity. I hope that that message will continue and people will know that this came out of that moment that happened in 2020 when George Floyd was killed. These are his words, but this is not where it ends. We can move towards something that's bigger than us. And that's going to, change our society ultimately. And hopefully this will spark something in some one person. This takes one person. So start where you are, do what you can. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever it is. <laughs> so so most people recognize around the world today the image of George Floyd uh, because of that moment. Um, uh, will you uh, consider doing an image of him in keeping with the style images of the heroes that you have painted? Uh, do you, do, are, you thinking, are you thinking of transforming that image in some way? Um, um, uh, so I've started a new project <laughs> um, that kind of came out of this one. Um, and it's taken up all of my time where I can't even get in front of a canvas anymore, it seems like. 
Um, but uh, I think if I'm inspired to do so, I think most of the work I do comes from inspiration. Um, it's not just uh, about, okay, this is a hot moment. Let me try to go do something that's gonna capture this moment. But it's a true inspiration. Um, I think the George Floyd moment, right, was a tipping point for a bigger thing, right? And so I look at his life as a catalyst for why we're here today, right? And even the outcome of the verdict from yesterday, right, is um, it's bigger than Derek Chauvin, right? I don't think by any stretch that is justice. I think it's accountability, which is a step in the right direction. But I think that, um, you know, I, I create from a space of inspiration and I want that inspiration to be able to la make a lasting impact. And so um, I think, you know, there are probably millions of paintings of George Floyd out there. Um, I think, uh, I don't know if mine would make, <laughs> would make another, you know, another dent, but I think Captain his words was, was really powerful because it speaks to, I think, what anyone can connect with. Well, we think your work is unique. Uh, it, it, you may not think you're there yet with the thousands of images. And so the, the format and the style that you've taken, again, with some of the heroes of, uh, of, of people committed to social justice is, 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 is unique. Uh, and, and so, uh, you know, I want to encourage you to continue to do that uh, in, in that vein. I appreciate that, and I am. So I'll take this opportunity to talk about briefly just, you know, another project that I've started as a result. And this project literally came out of this George Floyd moment. So George Floyd left me back, led me back to Garvey, Marcus Garvey, which is a Jamaican national hero. Um, Garvey's message of, you know, Pan-Africanism and unity and all of those things. And that message led me back to our national heroes in Jamaica. And so now, um, I'm producing a project to revive and modernize the portrayal of Jamaica's national heroes, which is a multidimensional project to recreate their paintings, um, the images of the heroes. And I'm also creating a 10 episode docuseries um, to be distributed um, to the world so people can understand the contribution that Jamaica's national heroes not only made in Jamaica, but how they impacted the rest of the world. So jamaicanationalheroes.com people can have a chance to go check it out and see the images, see what we're doing there. But that was birthed out of this. And that's why when you're asking me, early, asking me earlier about this new place, it is a new place, but it's a new place that's shifting and allowing me to be very deliberate and intentional about the work I create because I'm realizing how much impact we can have in changing people, and changing our, impacting our communities I spoke to as well. And so going back home and being able to do that from home out to the world is, um, is where my current laser focus is. So, thank you so much, Mark. Oh, excuse me, Dean Pope. No, 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 no. I was going to say, so thank you. <laughs> <laughs> we had um, two, two more questions, but one of the questions that actually uh, popped up while um, you were talking and the Dean was looking um, at his notes um, was um, how we plan to use this um, art piece at OSU and what kind of relationship we're hoping um, to have. And so you alluded in your answers to what you hope uh, your work will do. Mm -hmm. And so if we um, can just, if I can just add what we hope, um, perhaps um, an installation of your art uh, in our college um, might do for our college. Um, one thing I think um, I mentioned, uh, you know, perhaps um, right as people were um, logging on, is that um, we um, have a commitment to the arts in, in the college, um, but we also very much resonate with your message that um, you want to use art and imagery to actually spark conversations um, and to actually have art not be this untouchable thing, but be able to actually be used and um, discussed and reflected upon, um, not just um, about the George Floyd moment, but for other issues. And so that's how we perhaps um, want to use um, your art um, 
um, in our college. We're always looking um, for tools um, that actually help people uh, reflect and help people discuss um, and help people plan uh, around things uh, for action as well. And so that's what we hope uh, potentially that your artwork can do. Um, certainly having students be able to interact uh, mm -hmm. with art in a way uh, that sparks their own conversations, certainly our faculty, our staff, and uh, also different people across the university community uh, being able uh, to have this kind of piece uh, be associated with our college and um, some of the conversations that we are having around issues of racial justice and equity. Uh, I appreciate you talking about uh, just your work with Jamaica. Um, one piece of our college is also internationalization. And we're always looking at comparative views of racial justice and equity. And so um, this is another thing that I think um, a, a type of relationship and engagement uh, with you and with your ARC um, can actually inform uh, the work that we're doing uh, in our college. Um, one more question that we had from someone, and um, I think it's an awesome question um, that we'll have as a last question, and then we'll move into our next uh, Mentimeter. And thank you to the audience for participating in those Mentimeters. Uh, they're not just fun things to do during a webinar. They also give us a little bit of feedback um, for how you're experiencing these webinars in real time, um, even though you will receive um, an email that has a, a link to a survey after this. Uh, but this last question, Mark, was if you could collaborate with any other artist of any genre or type of art, who are some artists you'd like to work with um, who, could ex who could enhance your art and whose art you could also enhance? And I think that's a very um, awesome question. And so uh, take it away. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Somebody doesn't like me here. <laughs> Um, that is uh, it's a tough one. Um, that is a, that's a really tough question. Um, the, I would say that connecting with other artists and individuals who are, um, who have a mission and, you know, a purpose behind what they want to do. Um, and aligns ideology, you know, with the ideology of creating impact um, are individuals that I consider. I don't think I've ever sat down and thought about that question. That's why it's hard for me to just kind of nail in on a person, but I could give the characteristics of that person if that gives perspective. So I want, you know, I would love to collaborate with someone who wants to have a global impact, right? A positive message, um, a unifying message, um, a message that is going to allow us to move collectively as humanity towards, um, you know, compassion towards each other, um, love for one another, um, and, you know, empathy, right, is one of those things that we need more of, right? I think, you know, <laughs> we think about the things that we do, and we're so caught up sometimes in the um, the laws or what we're supposed to do, but empathy just plays such a big role in just how we treat each other. So, you know, people that share that message and share that ideology and share that um, focus on bringing that together are people, the kind of artists that I would want to work with and the types of projects I would love to get engaged with. Um, so that, I'm trying to think of like, you know, Bob Marley was alive, he'd be perfect. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, sorry, uh, I just put you on the spot there. Yeah, and... But that was, <laughs> but that's like, uh, that, that's what I, I'll think about that one for the next time. Yes. I'll be ready for the next time. Yes, no, no worries. <laughs> um, and while the Minty Meter is um, coming up, I will say that um, in your docu series, we noticed a lot of music and jazz playing behind you. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's one of our Dean's mm -hmm. uh, sort of personal favorites that he plays in his office, uh, mm -hmm. anything uh, jazz or classical. So um, 
yeah, you're already doing that in some ways. So our next Mentimeter question is, what are you taking away from today's conversation? And so we'll just pause right there as you answer the question. So while that is coming up, I, I want to, again, thank our audience and um, thank you um, for participating in the Mentimeter. Uh, one of the things uh, that has come up is that art is an incredibly powerful tool, and we certainly think so too, uh, which is why we asked our artivist, Mark Fai, to join us today. Um, just a few uh, wrap up. Um, and, and keep them coming. Uh, we see some answers are still popping up right now um, and we'll leave that up. Um, also, if you don't um, log off uh, immediately, we were going to just um, share a screen of um, some of Mark Fye's uh, other artwork. Uh, but as you can see also on his background, uh, he has his Instagram, um, uh, a site up there and we will also uh, share a screen that shows some of the additional artwork that he uh, has done and so in your uh, spare time if you want to um, go to either of those and um, some really powerful um, images um, for you to interact with uh, as well and now I'll turn it over uh, to uh, Ryan Randall and um, she'll give us a couple of uh, wrap-up uh, sort of um, words. Well, thank you so much, Dr. Arnold. I appreciate it. Well, the Office of Equity, Diversity, and Global Engagement would like to thank Artivis uh, Mark Five for sharing his body of work uh, with the university, um, our surrounding local and national communities. Uh, your 46 Please artwork visually encapsulates the gravity of that moment we all witnessed on um, May 25th of 2020. Uh, with the verdict announced yesterday, um, this was just the beginning of our quest for justice, equity, and as we have heard throughout this discussion, accountability. So uh, thank you again for your powerful artwork and activism. And also uh, we'd like to thank the audience uh, for joining us today as we discuss the important role art plays in activism and how artists just around the country inspire um, a lot of these communities that are facing um, issues of injustices and um, having uh, issues with being treated uh, equitably, equitably. I'm so sorry, I can't pronounce that right, but equal treatment, I'll say that. Uh, also, uh, we hope that this meaningful uh, dialogue will continue even past um, this uh, webinar. Uh, if also, if you're interested in viewing The Conflicted Coward, um, please visit Mark's website at markfycreations.com. And just before we um, conclude, I also wanted to share a quote that uh, W.E.B. Uh, du Bois said, um, begin with art because art tries to take us outside ourselves. It is a matter of trying to create an atmosphere and context so conversation can flow back and forth and we can be influenced by each other. So I definitely think that your artwork has allowed for those conversations as we were having today to flow back and forth and also to help not just influence each other, but inspire each other and also mm -hmm. to share just our life experiences. And a lot of times art can help that way. So thank you so much, um, truly appreciate it. Thank you so much for having me. And I just wanna make sure I mention uh, George Tandy Jr. who contributed the music to the project. I uh, came in to do the last two episodes. Um, so um, a lot of people you know, came together to make this happen and support it. I wanna thank all, all of those people that came on, logged on and everybody that liked and shared the, the docu-series and uh you know i uh, really appreciate you guys having me thank you dr pope davis dr arnold jenna ryan neil wherever he is <laughs> for 
putting this together. Really appreciate it and look forward to working with you guys, um, you know, as we go forward. Absolutely. Thank you so much and have a great afternoon um, to our audience. Thank you.